How do you get a major alteration approved? Um, it, you can have it field approved or you can go out and find an FCC. Bingo. Okay. Is everybody familiar with those processes or understand that? Mm -hmm. A field approval just means, <coughs> hey, local FAA office, I'm going to drop a Chevy V8 in my Cherokee 180. Mm -hmm. They're probably going to say, yeah, call the FAA Mido or you're going to have to go through FAA engineering, right? If it's something a little simpler like an avionics install that's not listed under the STC, you can still do it but you're going to have to do a field approval or you're going to have to apply for an STC yourself for that particular install. Okay. I don't recommend that. And here's why from the business side, it's not a quick process. Even a field approval is typically nowadays. If it's something very complex, the local FISDO folks aren't allowed to approve that for a field approval. It has to go to FAA engineering. I had a situation, uh, <coughs> so I had a client that had a Cirrus SR22. He calls me, says, hey, I want to put a G5 in my SR22. I want to, my attitude indicator, I just want to pull it out and put the G5 in. I said, well, are you going to tie the G5 to anything? He's, nope, the attitude indicator's not tied to anything. So I just want to whoop, put it in there. I'm like, power, ground, pedostatic, done, right? Wrong. Right. Well, no, no, I, 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 you know, it was, it was great. I ordered the G5, get it all in, you know, I get him on the schedule, and we, we do the install, calibrate it, do all the configs, everything's working great. He's, he's excited. And I sit down to do my paperwork. Well, my first tab is the STC, and here's why. When you look at this, this determines which models of aircraft that this STC applies to, okay? And so you go down there and say, okay, well this one says there's an approved model list, or if you hear someone say an AML, mm -hmm. that's an STC's approved model list. It lists all the aircraft models that that STC can be applied to. And what I do is I'll come in and I'll only print for the client whichever page, because that's a pretty long document, the AML. I'll print the STC cover, page and, and there's a, usually a second page with that. Then when it goes to the AML, I'll print the AML title page, but then I'll only print, some of them are 30 pages long. I'll just print the one where his airplane's listed and then I'll highlight it with a highlighter and put it in his binder. <laughs> Couldn't find it, it wasn't on there. <laughs> I'm like, what? Why would Garmin exclude the Cirrus for a G5? And they, did, they didn't have it on there. And so I had to pull the G5 back out of his airplane, put his original attitude indicator in, and then hook it all back up, do another, uh, you know, I mean, it was frustrating because I had teed into the pedo and the static system because the, the old attitude indicator did not need pedo or static, right? But a G5 provides you a, the, all six flight instruments, including airspeed and altimeter. About two weeks went by, and I had egg on my face with a client. I really feel kind of dumb, you know. He's like, okay, what, what are my options? I said, well, I'm working with a local FISDO. Hopefully we can get a field approval done. Luckily, in about three weeks from that time, I get an email from the FAA saying, hey, check this out. Garmin had actually made a revision to their STC AML and it added the SR-22 series. You cannot even commit to a project. You shouldn't until you've got an approval path to airworthiness and return to service.